This is Katie Pertit. Thanks for joining me in the studio. I thought I would just give a go at recording myself while I'm doing um, some art journaling to share my process with you, my thought process. I have a vague idea of what I want to do. I've collected some pieces. You can see here, I have my blank journal here. Um, I printed out a printable photo from my website here. And um, I'm just gonna give it a go and see what happens. And you can follow along. And I hope it gives you some inspiration. All right, so I'm gonna start by using some matte medium to glue down my photo. Because I'm thinking that's gonna be kind of my anchor. Start it about there. This is just a digital printout um, from a PDF on my website. And I use, um, I currently have an older Epson uh, R1900 and I can see I already put it on there crooked. So I'm just gonna tweak it just a little. It's forgiving, not as forgiving as digital, yikes, but still forgiving. So let's get some more matte media. Glue it on there. And I'm just using this um, big brush I got on Amazon. I'll link the things down below in the description. So if you're interested, you can pick them up too. Then I'm gonna frame my women with one of the film strip frames from Vintage Artistry Nature Study, one of my 49 and Market collections. So I'm just kind of lightly adding some matte medium to the backside. And you can see it's larger than the photo, but that's fine. That kind of gives it an artistic um, vibe. And I'm gonna layer some papers over it. Okay, you can see I pulled these collage sheets, these are from, I need to take this off. These are from the um, Color Swatch Lavender collage sheet pack. I like the house. I kind of thought, okay, these two women in a house, it gives it a story. So I'm gonna just tear And these collage sheets are six by eight, which works great because the 49 and Market Memory Journal is six by eight. So I like that. I'm going to add some matte medium to the back of it. Sorry, I'm off screen a little bit with this here. Let me get this all on here and then I will put it in position. <clears throat> Oops, let's see. Just smooth it out. Uh -oh, doesn't want to go, does it? Okay, it needs more matte medium. And I'm gonna get some underneath here so that all sticks nicely. It's bubbling, blah. Okay. Get some down here. Obviously, I didn't adhere too well on the back side. And then get some up here. Okay. I think we're pretty good. Brush that lightly over. And I have a new uh, base here and I wanna make sure I don't mech it up the first time I use it. Okay, so let's see. I have some other pieces that I wanted to add into this. Um, Let's see, I think I'm gonna go with some of the vintage handwriting. 
like maybe right over there. So let's see. First, I want to tear the top of it. I want more of an organic edge. And then I'll tear down. Oops. Okay, I'm not doing that so well. Tear down this edge so that it stays organic as well. And not as easy as you'd think, right? That's okay. There we go. Okay. And you can just save those scraps for another project. Okay, I like the way that looks right there. So again, some more matte medium. Maybe I'll do a little better job of adding it to the back side so I have more stickage. Oh, that was nice. That was so wet, I tore it. Well, that's okay because it's art journaling and there are no rules and there is no like formula to follow. You just follow what you feel. That's pretty much what I do. I think about composition. I think about telling a story. I think about color and what products will show it off best. And a lot of times when I'm doing stuff like this too, it makes me think of what products have I not designed that I should be including in the collection I have in process right now. Okay, I liked this calendar piece. So let's stick that on. Kind of reminisce of the 1800s maybe, like when this photo, I don't think this photo is from the 1800s. I think it was from the 1930s if I remember right. So again, I'm gonna go over the top of it with some more matte medium, get it all adhered. Okay, and now I'm just gonna start layering other elements. I liked these numbers. I don't know what, real, really no symbology in them. They just spoke to me. So I cut them out of the collage sheets. I'm going to add them here. Let's see how that works. You know, and I think that having the mix of the lavender and ocean colors, that film strip frame is from Nature Study, so it's not from the ocean pack, but it's still got those blue tints. And then of course, love for Vintage numbers. So I'm going to put that there. And again, go over the top, get it to stick nicely. And oh, I liked this. Um, this again was from the collage sheets. It's an old, old um, sewing pattern book. And um, in the page, her legs are covered by another child. So I just cut them, figuring I'll layer them on an edge. Yeah, let's see, that worked nicely. Oh, I like that. Well, and because, you know, everything I do seems to need butterflies. And I know some people love butterflies, some people have had enough butterflies, but for me, they're timeless. There's so much symbology in butterflies and moths that I just really feel like you can't go wrong in art journaling, scrapbooking, collage art, when you add in some vintage butterflies. And then a sentiment. Again, this is from the collage sheets. There's a page of 
sediments that you can cut apart for your art journaling. And um, they work really nicely. And they're different for every collection. So if you collect all the collage sheet packs, you'll have lots of sediment choices. There's that one. <clears throat> and I'm gonna just lightly put some matte medium on top. See how quickly that came together? My gosh, like 10 minutes. Boom, done. Now I might come back to this and add some paint. I think um, step away, let it dry, trim the edges, and go from there. Okay, I'm back. The page has dried. And I changed my mind. I'm going to add some rub-ons to this page. So I'm gonna um, skip the paint and I'm gonna go for some rub-ons. These are my um, Vintage Artistry Roughly Sewn. I'm looking here to see which ones I wanna go with. You know, will I cut them? Um, one of the easy ways I have found to do the rub-ons is to use an exacto knife and when you rub it or run it gently there now when i go to add my rub on watch it won't work because i did this but it should work um so i'm going to line up my cut and i'm going to just go there oops i need to hold it down you know, sometimes I get too anxious and want everything to be speedy. I could cut out this strip of stitches and ensure that I'm not going to get any excess anywhere, but sometimes I just want to be quick. And look, that worked. So, and I'm often asked what tool I'm using. I am using an old, old burnisher from my college days. Um, the burnisher that we give with our rub-on packs, this plastic one, this works fine. You can also use your bone folder. That works well too. Um, but this has been with me since college and I love it. So that's what I use. Okay, so we added some stitching. I think I'm gonna add some splashes. These are from the nature study collection. And these I am gonna cut because inevitably I would end up with all kinds of splatters that I don't want. So I'm just cutting out some splatters and then take a look at my page here and see where I want them to go. Okay, I think I'm gonna do some up here over my photo, kind of overlapping. I really feel that when I overlap rub-ons, like the text splatters like that, it helps tie the elements on the page together. So that's one of the reasons why I like to use them. It adds texture and it helps tie my elements together. And if everything doesn't come off perfect with the text splatters, it really doesn't matter because it's organic and splattered and doesn't need to be exact. Okay, let's see. As I look at this, I think that maybe, maybe like some kind of botanical rub-on at the side. Let me see if I can find one that's big enough as I flip through. Oh yeah, you know what? I think that one will look really nice. This is from the Vintage Artistry Nature Study. And this is the foliage collection of rub-ons. Went kind of crazy with this collection, just couldn't stop with the rub-ons, felt like we needed so much more. So there's a foliage set, there's a wings set that's got all the butterflies and moths. And then there's a mushroom set as well, I think. Hopefully I remember that right. All right, just cutting this out. I'm gonna save this little smaller one for another project. Okay, 
So just peel away the backing, kind of lay it over where I want it to go, make sure I like that look, which I do. So I'm gonna just set it down and I'm gonna rub. Now the rub-ons are pretty forgiving. If you peel it back and you see that you missed rubbing down part, you can always lay it back down and rub that down. Um, sometimes uh, you'll notice a color change that it's peeled away from the background. And the trick, these cuts, is getting your fingernail under that to pull it back. So I like to pull it back. You can see I got a little rub on on there, which is fine. And I'm gradually pulling it back so I can see if I'm missing anything. And I'm not, and just like that, perfect. Really like that. Now I'm actually thinking maybe this smaller one would help tie it together if I put it, should I put it now? Not in the center. You know, you want balance. And that's what I'm going for with this, hoping that the composition of the art journal page, you'll see imagery that'll help lead your eye through the images and the story of the page. You know, and not every art journal layout has to have a story. A lot of it is about creative expression and creative exploration. I think it makes you a better artist to do this kind of exploration. All right, I think that'll about do it. Um, really happy with how that turned out and that was really fast. So except for the dry time, it's been like 15 minutes, right? That's nothing. You know, if you spend 15 minutes a day doing this kind of exploration, I just think that um, it helps. It's like art therapy and it also makes you a, a better artist and helps you see things differently. Um, so there you have it. Thank you for joining me and I hope you'll join me again as I hope to be continuing to do more and more of these projects. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks again. Bye.